Welcome to Hugh Lane Gallery. Um, I'm here today, my name is Maud Cotter. Um, I'm an artist and I'm having a show here at the Hugh Lane. And this is part of their program titled Coffee Conversations. So we thought it'd be nice if I just kind of walked around the gallery with you and just said a few words about the work. And um, we're here in the front hall where I have located a piece titled uh, Matter of Fact. And um, throughout the exhibition, I have written the titles on the wall. And I was interested to see that this one is underneath Hercules, son of Jupiter in classical mythology. And um, I'm not particularly drawn to his great feats of strength, but I do take a prompt from his sense of action. And I think that that kind of ties in with this piece here which is a sort of burst of energy in the, in the main foyer. Um, when I was starting to make this piece, I, I first located some of these devices here, which are literally just curtain rings, as things that I could use as devices so that I could spin or locate the drawing around that. And it was a very free-form drawing I did. I actually made it the other way up, um, to start with and then tilted it over when I'd finished. The way I placed it on the work meant that the general energy of the drawing was not depleted by an inaccurate registration. So in the interior of this piece, I've modeled um, some tri-wall card, which is French card actually, but um, it's very strong. And I made it around a mold and then I cut it off the mold and reassembled it. And here I have covered it in about 20 layers of water white resin, which makes it really strong. Um, but it still reserves that translucence and it produces a slight more effect. Um, it's very much of a kind of a human settlement at the heart of all this drawing and speediness. So um, it made the piece work for me. And, I, I was really delighted to show it here because, of course, it's largely a white environment, so it adds a real intensity to the line, and um, it's just sort of a great pleasure for artists to find that a site inflects and changes the relative condition of the work. And this speaks very much to the title of the work. Um, the title is Matter of Fact, and it's very much involved with the notion that um, the qualitative aspects of form and its inflection and variation in space, its relational aspects, and its kind of hard to pin down um, values are much more critical to me than more factual elements. So this is, this is full of air and, and changes quite a bit as you move around. And I also like the fact that it made me really aware of the curling the leaves and the in the capitals of this classical foyer here. So it made, it made everything a little more sensitive and I think it made my piece different. For this piece, I'm just going to say a few words about the collaboration I did with Coracle Press and specifically with Simon Cutts, who's a poet. A poet. Um, Simon had a very strong and positive response to a piece I made, which was a series of um, hot water bottles that I cut in half and I cast. And um, well, he had such a strong response to it that I asked him to title the piece. And um, he eventually came up with this title, Unique Forms of Continuity in Space, um, which is uh, Bocchioni, the Italian futurist. Um, a very famous piece of his. I really liked it because it talks about the kind of propagative element of my work, that their notion of an evolution of form that continues to time and space. So um, I stripped out the capitals, which kind of makes the text flow. And <clears throat> as a result of this involvement, Simon decided he'd make a book, which he has done. Um, it consists of a short essay, some plates of the works, and he wrote um, five poems as well, which 
I was very pleased about. Um, I'll just read one, which I think relates to the piece that's in the... Um, I mean, none of the actual poems are specific to any one element of the piece, but nevertheless, <clears throat> there's a sense of something of this in these few words. Um, ingot or unzipped jigot of pig iron. I like the tenderness of this word, perch, because as you come into the show, you'll just see this word. And in some ways, it conjures a little bit of my spatial attitude to this space here, because it's, um, there's a lot of slippage in the um, transitional space between the old gallery and the new galleries, and um, with floating walls and stairs and great, great kind of a very beautiful high wall as well. So this piece, here is Perch, and I wanted to put very specific pieces um, into places in this space that I was attracted to, and this little nook here in the window I was very attracted to. I actually made this piece three times, destroying the other two, until I came to this conclusion of a very understated piece. Um, the Perch is, if you like, looks like a, I don't know, sort of like a piece of industrial waste, but it's actually something I very carefully made in aluminium. And um, the upper section here is styrofoam, and then there's this flow of sponge, which gives the impression of very, very casually holding the wall. I, I sort of feel this piece needs to be seen with what's going on outside and the eclectic nature of um, the plants and the materials. So that's how I view this piece, as a sort of piece that just slipped into the corner there. Um, this piece is titled Somewhere Else, and um, again, just the top of this wall, I felt offered an opportunity, you know, to just engage with the space. So I was very interested in the this vertical section and how the compression of the ceiling comes down and how the walls kind of move in on either side, creating this compressed space at the tip of the wall. I imagined something to do with the nature of energy and how it spills out of the body. And, you know, I suppose it's about that edge of formation in form and I used aluminium and um, acrylic, acrylic mirror and plastic because of their ability of those materials to um, play with light by transmission and um, other forms, mostly the light is bouncing off them. So it just spills out in this direction into the space. Um, this is still part of that kind of um, extraordinary corridor, if you like, or open space between the two galleries. And I really took this as an opportunity to explore ideas around material agency. Um, this piece is called Watery Life and Rock and prompts a consideration of the fact that both um, inorganic and organic materials have the same form of agency. So I loved this wall and I, I kind of spilled the work up the wall. Um, this, the light is just fantastic here. I began to think of this space in all its unsettlement as being like a geological shift, um, like the thing of Fettler in Iceland, where there's um, a fault that runs through the island and the island is just kind of opening like that. Um, I also felt it gave me an opportunity to explore issues around agency and material. Um, so I did very specific pieces along here, um, Perch, somewhere else, and this piece, Watery Life and Rock, um, which 
takes advantage of the wall and just runs up the wall. So there is a kind of a speediness and then there's a layering and chopping. Things are floating, unsettled. There, there are slits, in fact, they're called one of the pieces, pieces slit um, in this space. In this section here, I was very drawn to the slit. Beautiful slit here, it's, it's such a sculptural moment. It provides huge kind of an opportunity sculpturally. Um, I kind of surprised myself in a way because I did quite a linear piece um, titled Slit. The lines of this piece kind of like produces fingers which go, go around the wall and then it's picked up by a mirror piece on the other side. And I was interested in how the virus, COVID virus, actually entered the cell and how it then, if you like, optimized its own existence and, and created um, a hybrid of its experience in the body and then escaped to, to propagate itself in other areas. So these really, the, the slit has that kind of sensation and, and these elements here are, are almost like um, remnants of the body, possibility of the breath being dissipated in the balloon and just a feeling of amputation generally in that piece. Um, this piece I titled A Dappled World, um, which is a reference to the uh, Jared Manny Hopkins poem. I think his, um, some of his words, counter original, spare and strange, said something to me about the eclectic nature of the varying layers in this piece. And um, I guess about the, the compact and kind of immense variety of material, both um, man-made and, and organic materials and how they play off one another. Throughout this show, I'm really examining the nature of physical reality and our integrative relationship with that and how we can find new forms of consciousness within that to move forward. Um, so this piece really titled Without Stilling is a real examination of what constitute form, what is form. So in the interior piece, I have these kind of Euclidean sections, um, quite geometric as a sort of generative point of, of how we understand the physical world. And then they flex into what is a very rasping and kind of corrosive edge. So I imagine that it's the sort of the edge of formation, which extends all the time. I'll just give a very brief outline of my thinking with this piece, which is titled And Boone Revisited. Um, I think that one thing I'd like you to, to know about here is that there's a hook in the floor here onto which this high tension cable is attached. It comes out just up here. So the piece is actually held between the tension between the floor and here. And I have some weights as well, which create this kind of canter lever. Um, very much about, very involved in the idea of architectural values being put upon by contemporary demands, commercial demands. And um, so I have sort of detritus from a site and this sort of skin of plastic, which is rather like a great scheme or plan or, or a dissipated body somehow falling over this piece of in, um, engineering tension points. So, you know, it's, it's a piece to be experienced really. Uh, 
Um, well, one thing I'd like to tell you about this piece, it's to do with the title of the piece, which is called A Breather of Air. And it referenced a comment made by Marcel Duchamp during an interview. He had um, possibly one of his last interviews where the interviewer asked him, what is he doing now? Slightly disrespectful kind of question, but anyway, he said, je suis un respirateur, and I kind of translated that as a breather of air, but what attracted me to it was the fact that um, he'd acquired such a level of consciousness and throughout his practice, and um, I felt in a way that had become a piece in itself, just his mind, um, very, very involved in thinking about our, um, our care of our minds and um, also human consciousness in terms of it, extending it in terms of our understanding of material. So there is a sense of kind of slippage of air from this piece. These vertical structures are made of stainless steel and I wanted something light that wasn't particularly industrial in its reference, so I chose these different sections which kind of have a feeling of um, timber or just small little sticks. I quite like the, the lightness of that. This piece is really apocalyptic. It's kind of the reduction of material and all our aspirations and ambitions down into two registers. So the bottom element, which is welded plastic, is, has a sort of repetitious architectural format to it and a quite a playful one too, but it's um, bright and colorful in the kind of way that commercial vividness is bright and colorful. Um, so it, it's a bit, it's a bit odd. And then the top layer is a series of ovals um, cut in styrofoam. And I, I kind of think of this as a sort of like a fungal layer or a habitation layer that has become absented so there's no human existence here. It's the planet really in a state of elemental degradation. So it's um, then, but, but you know, I titled it uh, The Moon is Falling um, because of the fact that the moon, the, the ellipse of the moon um, moves around the earth in such a way that at times it appears to fall away from the earth and, um, and other times then it returns. So, in a way that kind of gives us as me a sensation of hope within this that we have the possibility to return and we have the possibility to take on that deeper level of consciousness and begin to build um, a more sustainable future so it's a bit heavy going but you know I felt I had to imagine something as this as bleak as this really <laughs>